The Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, feature many accounts of Jesus showing love and compassion towards people. Jesus raises to life the only son of a widow, whom he takes pity on. He heals scores of people suffering from all manner of ailments and illnesses. He feeds thousands of people who hear him preach, because he notes that they've gone quite some time without eating. And the list goes on. Everything Jesus did was ultimately motivated by love, something all four gospel writers naturally took for granted. However, what you may not know, and what I didn't know until recently, is that there is only one passage in the Synoptic Gospels, in Mark's Gospel, where it specifically says that Jesus loved someone. So who was this person? And why did Mark feel a particular need to emphasize that Jesus loved him? The passage is located in chapter 10, verses 17 to 22. Here, a rich young ruler finds Jesus, kneels before him, and asks him what he needs to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus initially criticizes him for calling him good master, and then lifts off some of the Ten Commandments, all of which the young man says that he's observed from a young age. At this point in the exchange, something interesting happens. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. The young man's response to this love was disappointing, and yet it betrays a common attitude among those who are confronted with this particular teaching about forsaking all. Mark wrote, And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. When we consider love, it is easy to envisage something sweet, something that forgives or heals us, that enfolds us in its arms to comfort and reassure us. However, Mark decided to let the reader know that Jesus loved the man to whom he spoke such a challenging truth, to sell everything he owned, pick up his cross, and follow Jesus, probably to an early and gruesome death. Mark no doubt understood that people would find it extremely difficult to recognize love in this teaching. The rich young ruler's response reflects the agony of being asked to let go of his wealth and attachments. Isn't that how most of us feel too, when we hear this teaching? We see and feel the love in being healed, or consoled, or blessed materially. But where is the love in being told to relinquish everything that makes us feel good, prosperous, and secure? And let's remember, it wasn't just the rich young ruler Jesus commanded to do this, even though virtually every church today teaches that Jesus only instructed this one person to sell his possessions due to the rich man's supposedly unique problem with materialism. In Luke 11.41, Jesus loves a group of Pharisees by exhorting them to give what they have to help the poor. In Luke 12.33, Jesus loves all his followers by instructing them to sell what they own and give the proceeds to the poor. And, in Luke 14.33, Jesus loves a great multitude by explaining that they must forsake everything they have to follow him. After his death and resurrection, Jesus instructed his disciples to teach others to put these things into practice. And we can see in Acts 2 and 4 that this is exactly what they did when thousands of newly converted Christians sold everything they had and lived together in community, sharing all things in common. Of course, it's natural for us to be challenged by such direct and difficult truths. But when we start to accept these truths, and crucially the love behind them, as Mark so thoughtfully pointed out, we may begin to actually experience what Jesus calls the good news of the kingdom of heaven. A few verses on in Mark 10, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father 
or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. You see, what Jesus was offering the rich young ruler was so much more than he was unwilling to let go of. And what Jesus is offering us is so much more than anything we may be clinging to as well. Jesus is offering us eternal life, where we walk hand in hand with the creator of the universe. This is good news now, while we're alive too. So why do we so often fail to see and experience the benefits of surrendering all to God? Isn't it because we assume these benefits are precisely the things we will lose if we put our faith entirely in him? Perhaps this is why Mark, like Matthew and Luke, felt it was necessary to include Jesus' reassurance in the story, that if we give up homes, families and lands in this world, we will receive many more times over in this life as well. Of course, these benefits are only part of the picture. We also experience peace from knowing that what we're doing is in line with God's will for our lives. We experience adventure through walking with God and going wherever he leads. We experience God's daily provision when we faithfully reach out to others in service and love. And we experience the unity and support of whichever part of the body of Christ God brings us into fellowship with. Consider the love in all that. When Jesus beheld the rich young ruler with love, he was beholding each of us with the same love. He knows how easy it is for us to be distracted and tempted by lesser pursuits and goals that get in the way of a continual moment-to-moment -moment relationship with him. He doesn't want fans shouting, Good Master! He wants devoted followers who walk with him, eat and drink with him, share his truth through the power of his Holy Spirit, who are willing to live and die for him like he lived and died for us. Isn't this intimate relationship with God the pearl of great price that Jesus said is worth selling or giving up everything for? Now consider how different this picture is to the picture people so often paint of Jesus' instruction to the young man as being bad news. Mark knew that Jesus was not telling the rich young ruler to give away all his wealth to the poor as a punishment for being rich. Mark particularly emphasized the fact that Jesus loved the man before he shared this difficult truth with him. Hardly a preface for dishing out a punishment. No. It is much more likely that Mark wanted to help readers understand the good news of the forsake or teaching by emphasizing the love behind it. He wanted us to understand that giving up everything that comes between us experiencing Christ's kingdom of love is in our best interests. And he wanted us to experience this love and truth, no matter how wealthy we are. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to encourage us to sell everything we have, pick up our cross and follow him, so that whoever may believe him will have eternal life. If you can see the love in this and want to understand more about what it means to take this step of faith in response to Jesus' command, please get in touch with us at the email address that appears on screen now. May God bless you with ever more of his incredible love.